Does your outboard waggle and woggle and bang all around when you're riding it? Well, chances are you've got bad motor mounts. These rubber mounts are, uh, are a problem for older Honda outboards, and uh, this is what they look when they're fractured. This surface right here is supposed to be laminated to this surface right here. And what happens is if that's bad, it allows this to move around. Likewise, up there, this is at the bottom of the tiller handle right here, that bracket. See how that comes out of there? That's not supposed to do that. That rubber right there is supposed to be mounted to that metal disc that you can see that's nice and shiny. The reason why it's nice and shiny is because it's been protected by that rubber all the years because they were laminated together. They're not so anymore. So I'm going to take these uh, mounts off and see if I can do something to uh, fix them up. So one other component when you're making your own bushings for this thing, um, this plate right here that used to have the rubber laminated right to it, now since there's no lamination, I needed to put a bolt on there to hold the whole thing together on both sides. And so those bolt heads were not there originally. The original product doesn't have that. And when you go to put this thing back in place, those bolt heads were rubbing on the housing just a little, little bit. So I could either shave the bolt heads down, which is another approach, and I suppose I could have done that. Or in this case, I just ground down a little bit off of the uh, off of the housing. Now, it, it looks like quite a bit was ground out. It really wasn't that much. Um, I know that this material is quite thick because when I took these bolt holes out, I could tell this entire area right here is probably 5 eighths of an inch thick. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of metal in this whole area, so I really am not at all worried about weakening it. But anyway, I just wanted to point out that if you have bolt heads to protrude there and your bracket doesn't bolt right on, don't just crank the bracket on tight to try and pull it in, because a couple things will happen. You'll either strip the bolt threads, these ones, strip them, because this is aluminum and it will strip easy, so don't do that. Or you may bend this bracket, it's pretty unlikely, it's a strong, well, maybe, I think this threads would strip before you bend that. Um, the, the other thing though that people might be tempted to do is tighten it down just until those bolt heads contact this housing um, and leave it alone because these bolts that you're tightening in will actually tighten and then kind of bottom out or stop. The torque will increase on them, but that's no good because that keeps this bracket off of that motor. You want this bracket touching that motor. So. What you do is just put your new bolt heads in there, take this bracket and scrape it around a little bit until you've scratched the paint here and you know exactly where to grind. And just grind a little bit at a time until, you, until it fits on there. Now this one fits on there perfect. Okay, bye. Well, what we've got here is I got the old motor mounts out and you can see that the, uh, or shock mounts I guess you call them, uh, there's a stud embedded in the rubber on one side and it's missing on the other because this mount is no good. So I took a hockey puck and a hole saw and just drilled out two holes and I'm going to, uh, I got a long bolt on the inside of the motor where that shock mount bolt goes and it protrudes through to the back end. I'm going to thread this rubber on and then put it all back together and uh, tighten the bolt down and hopefully that does the job. Now I realize these motor mounts or shock mounts um, cushion vibration in both directions. So if my thumb and my finger were to come together, it would cushion in that direction. And if they were to separate, it would also kind of stretch in that direction. And what I've designed only cushions in one direction uh, because there's there's no, like you can't put this rubber under tension because the, the bolts that I've got aren't laminated into this thing. But what I'm gonna do is crank it down, not super tight, but tight enough that uh, there's always going to be some uh, some compression of this motor mount, and hopefully, um, you know, further compression due to vibration will be absorbed. And if there is there is uh, you know a release of that compression because of vibration in the other direction, this will just expand ever so slightly and take up any slack. Uh, I'm going to give it a try like that. If it doesn't work, then I'm going to take this bolt right here. It's a long bolt. I'll bring it in to the engine compartment and put a little piece of rubber under there. And that will that will provide absorption in both directions. But I'm gonna try it just like this for now. So I took a one and a half inch hole saw and a 
hockey puck is just the right size of one hockey, standard hockey puck, the perfect size for making two of these. So now I have these two and they, they look they look like they're supposed to be there. Uh, they look good. There's actually, the housing has kind of an indent and they just fit right up in there perfectly. The indent would be like an inch and three quarters. So my inch and a half of new bushings just fit right up in there perfect. The final thing on a Honda V75, I had to, uh, and uh, one of the ignition coil screws is uh, easily accessible. The other one you have to take out a rubber plug. This rubber plug had to come out to rubber access this screw. So, the screen is pretty good. The water pump is in great shape. I inspected it and uh, it throws water, you, it's warm, you can feel it, the thermostat is definitely working, so. And uh, this is forward, obviously. And this is reversed, so you'll see it's getting closer to 